Boa noite, Chimamanda. Um prazer revê-la. É, eu queria pegar um gancho é, na pergunta das Hello, minhas duas colegas. <risos> queria pegar nice um gancho. To see you again. A mim também, é um grande prazer. É, pegar um gancho na, na, na pergunta das minhas duas colegas, mas eu queria é, trazer para o... Lembranças, boas lembranças, porque mesmo quando a gente lê o seu livro, existem ali muitas boas lembranças, muitas lembranças felizes. E você costuma falar que você, a sua família é uma família muito bem-humorada, que vocês fazem muita piada. É, e quando você fala sobre a sua família, sua tradição, quando você fala de ser uma vir da, de uma etnia Igbo, quando você traz isso, você traz também para a gente, é, para o Brasil, para os brasileiros que não têm um passado, um pouco do que a no, da nossa ancestralidade. Então eu queria que você falasse sobre a sua infância, a sua adolescência, é, sobre essa mistura de, de, de tradições, que você contasse um pouco para a gente é, justamente isso, para a gente ter uma boa lembrança da, da, da nossa ancestralidade. Um, you're right. I mean, I, I, I really, I think that I was very fortunate to have just the most wonderful parents. And um, so I grew up in a university town in Osuka, in eastern Nigeria. And growing up was, I just had a very, I had a very happy childhood. I was the fifth of six children. And culturally, we were brought up to know that we were Igbo people. We spoke Igbo at home. Actually, we spoke both languages. We spoke Igbo and English at home. But we were brought up in a kind of, um, so, you, you know, it was, it was cosmopolitan. We were supposed to read books. But also, we were very much rooted in where we came from. So we spent Christmas in our ancestral hometown. Um, often, we would just go to visit my grandmother. And I think it gave me a sense of my interest in history, in, in where we came from, how we came to be where we are, I think started in the way that I was raised. Because when we'd go back to my ancestral hometown, I would want to know not just the story of my grandmother, but my great grandmother and her mother. And of course, my grandfather and his fathers as well. And um, I, so I've grown up to, I've become a person who is intensely proud to be an Igbo woman, proud of my culture, my history. I'm very interested in the connections between um, the peoples of my part of the world. I'm interested in the stories of Africans before colonialism came. I'm really interested in West African history before colonialism. And I think it's because of the way I was raised. I want to know more about my, you know, my, um, the history of my family, if that makes sense. But I do, you're, you're right, I do have many happy memories. The thing about grief, though, is that because it's still so new to me, because my mother, it's just been three months since my mother died, um, and it's a year this month since my father died, I haven't quite come to the place where I can just focus on the happy memories. Right now, for me, it's still a question of thinking about how much I have lost and how much I will never have again. I mean, my parents and I were so close. I, um, you know, before doing events, I would, you know, um, send my father my itinerary. If my father were alive, he would know that I was, I was doing this, um, this interview in, in Brazil. He would, he would follow by text. He would send me a text and say, are you done yet? Um, good luck, well, you know. And so having that kind of connection to my parents and then losing them the way that I have, sometimes it's difficult to focus just on the happy memories. Right now, I just think of, I cannot believe that this is now my life, you know. But I'm hoping that I'll get to the point where, where I'm just grateful, because really I am grateful to have had them. And I know that, the, that I'm fortunate to even have this grief, because had I not had the love that I had, For them, I would not be grieving the way that I'm grieving. So I do feel grateful to have had that love. Certo. 